I, I've been meaning to ask you about your thoughts on the new Dead Sea Scroll discoveries that happened a few weeks ago. Yeah, you know, I, I've looked around on, like, there's nothing, at least the last time I looked on the ASOR blog, that's the American Schools of Oriental Research. Um, I can't really find anything on the in the academic sources, which isn't unusual because they'll they'll wait until somebody publishes something or is near publication or presents something at you know one of the universities in Israel and whatnot. I, I'm betting this November uh, at either SBL or the ASOR meetings that somebody will have a session on this. But you know, it, it, the the most interesting part to me is that the uh, the new stuff is in Greek. Which is again, there there are Greek Dead Sea Scrolls. That that's not the first time for that, but obviously you'd expect Hebrew, you know, or Aramaic. But these are in Greek, and it's it's part of the. Um, the I mean, what I've been able to, to find that there's two fragments, uh, both from Minor Prophets, so Zechariah eight, two verses that's sixteen and seventeen, then Nahum one five and six. So it's the real small fragments, you know, whatnot. So you know, I found a few pictures. They're just little pieces, but this is typically how how they come across stuff. Cave four was a few hundred thousand of these pieces. If you go up online and get a picture of these uh, under under a few inches of bat dung, you know, guano. So <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. They're not all these neat scrolls in jars, you know, like you see in the pictures. A lot of it's this kind of stuff, you know, just little pieces that you got to try to figure out how to join them and, and whatnot. But if it's biblical stuff, at least you can, you know, you can type it out, run it through a computer and get, it speeds up the process rather than just doing it out of your head like they did in the old days. But yeah, it's interesting for sure. I mean, it, it, the nice thing is it shows there's stuff still out there, even if it's this small, but there, there's stuff still out there. Now, if they could only find a way of getting people to, on the black market to cough up what they have. That would be great. But I, cause I, I strongly suspect that there's stuff like that just waiting to, waiting to be sold, even though people nowadays know they've got to be real careful about that or that they don't want to end up in jail. They want to, they want to make their money, but not wind up in jail. So who knows? Yeah. I mean, especially cause the robbers have been happening for 60, 70 years. I mean, way, way before mm -hmm. they found, you know, the, the first cave. So, I mean, where where mm. you think they would have already sold a lot of that stuff? Yeah, I'm I'm betting they did. You know, sold it to other people like who private who aren't going to release it to the public. Yeah, private yeah, collectors. Okay. I'm yeah. I'm sure that's going to be the case. You know, and somebody dies, and oh, look what we found. You know, going through the house. You know, <laughs> yeah. so people can insulate themselves from from you know legal problems and whatnot. But yeah, I'm I'm sure you're right there. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's going to be interesting. That's going to it's probably going to be after our lifetime when all this stuff hits, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would imagine there's going to be something, you know, like that. Um, I, I don't, I don't think it'll take another hundred years to, to get something of, you know, significance out there because, you know, people, people do pass on, they do donate things, they come clean, you know, they, that, that, that happens. So, yeah. you know, and even if, even if they can manage to make a deal with a, with someone who will release it to the public, then that, that other person can always say, Oh, you know, I, I bought it from somebody on the dark web. I don't know who it is. So here it is. You know, yeah. I'm not keeping it, but there it is. You know, you if can, you're, I, I could see stuff like that happening. If you're a listener of the naked Bible podcast out there and you've got this in your private collection, we implore you to reach out to your museum, right, Mike, or you reach out to us, you know, we'll be happy to <laughs> facilitate transfer of ownership to a museum or university. So, the problem with all this, though, is is the propensity of fakery. You know, like the, yeah. the museum of the Bible got got hammered. You know, not too long right, ago. Right. You know, for for having purchased fakes, and that, I mean, the faking is pretty sophisticated, but it, it's not it's not hard to know how to do it. It's just yeah. you know, can you get to the materials? Do you have that much patience? You know, that that sort of thing to reproduce it this kind like of stuff. But people are scared. Well, what they what they do is they'll cut out. I, we were just watching uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago about something about the Mormon church and faking Joseph Smith documents. And he, the, the guy used for the, for the material on which the writing went, he used the same method as the old, I think it was the sixties or seventies novel by Irving Wallace, the word, uh, cause you, you get these, these manuscripts in museums and old libraries and 
you know, if, if they can get access to them, a lot of these like codexes that come from third, fourth century, they'll, they have blank pages in them. You just cut one out, you know, and, and walk out with it. You know, you put it, put it between something flat. You, you, you know, there you go. So yeah, go ahead and carbon date that puppy all you want. You know, <laughs> you know, you're going to find out it's, you know, in the three hundreds AD and it's a new gospel or something, you know, that, so that's as old as, you know, Irving Wallace, but, um, you know, mm. people who forge, they, they know how to, how to find yeah. those things that have the extra pages and cut them out. And then it's just a matter of the chemical analysis of the ink, which is, you know, you can get that in any, any journal article, you know, databases online. They do that kind of analysis, and so you can make the ink. The, the The trick is, is can you reproduce the handwriting? You know that that's usually where things go go awry. Uh, having trying to imitate imitate a scribal hand, but the other stuff, the, the quote unquote scientific stuff, you can fake that. It's not that difficult, at least in terms of what to do. Yeah, it's crazy. All right, Mike. Well, let's turn our attention back to the Bible and Revelation seven. I know you've. You've, back, you've, you've talked back to about your encrypted past. introduction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish I had some backwards. Yeah. Or, you know, my name is yeah. Yurt backwards. Does that mean anything? <laughs> Yurt? <laughs> kind of sounds. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, there, there is. I, I don't know if it's the correct spelling, but there are such things as Yurts. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, the, is that like the, to, the, the tents? The little circle Yeah, tents. those those round. Yeah, I think yurts. they're round. Yeah, they're round. Yeah, I was hoping things, something yeah. more powerful like. Right. Yeah. But if, it's not if terribly circle, exotic. Oh, well, if I'm a yeah, a circle tent, that's not as exciting. But. Ooh, yeah, yeah. You're you're a circle tent. Wow, yeah, I'm impressed. Yeah. That's not very. Yeah, we, and I'm gonna need you to come up with some kind of Hebrew. Meaning. Yeah, Hebrew word for yurt. I, yeah. Well, actually, <laughs> you know, I guess yeah. I'm just a number three. Trey stands for three. So. Yeah. There you go. I'm just See? three. <laughs> 